guys so i welcome you to the lecture series on dbms database management system and from the last lecture you see that i have been dealing with concurrency control protocols well myself dr dibdo so let's start today's class well in the last lecture i have discussed about different protocols and you have seen that they are of actually two types log based and timestamp based so today i will discuss different log protocols you have to note down that there are four types of log protocols available and the first one is simplistic log protocol simplistic log based protocols allow transaction to obtain a log on every object before a write operation is performed transaction may unlock the data item after completing the write operation so from the term simplistic log protocol this is very clear that this will be somewhat simple one because you know this type of protocols will only focus on obtaining a log on every data object before a write operation is performed means whenever you are going to perform a write operation one log will be obtain on that particular data object and when you are complete means that transaction you means that transaction is complete with write operation it may unlock the data item clear so just two sentence means obtain log before the write operation and unlock the data, data item after the write operation well then next one is pre claiming log protocol and pre claiming protocols evaluate their operations and create a list of data items on which they need logs so pre claiming pre claiming means what you are going to claim something before that event is going to occur so what here actually you are going to perform first is that you will create a list of data items where we need logs where they need logs for from in some operations to be performed on them so before initiating an execution the transaction requests the system for all the log it needs before hand okay and if all the logs are granted then the transaction executes and releases all the logs when all the operations are over so if all the logs are not granted then the transaction rolls back and waits until all the logs are granted so very simple first create a list of the items on which they need logs then before initiating the execution the transaction will request the system for all the logs it needs from that list you will have an idea means that transaction will have an idea that what are the data items on which log, the logs are required okay so parse transaction request the system for all those logs and then if all the logs are granted the transaction will be executed and release the all the logs after all the operations are over but what happen if all the logs are not granted it will roll back mean the transaction will roll back to initial condition and wait until all the logs are granted clear all the steps are clear so if we look at this draw some diagram then this will look like this see t begin t end this is time this curve denotes time different instances of time t begins when the transaction begin and transaction will begin only when all the logs will be acquired as all the logs will be acquired at the same instant of time this is a straight line so this is known as what log acquisition phase well you have any doubt at any instant of this video you may ask me because clearing the doubts are very important while learning dbms and this paper plays a vital role in different competitive examination scoring marks okay either get net or whatever the other competitive examination so first listen that transaction begin only when all the logs are acquired at the same instance so that's why this is straight see this arrow this arrow is pointing to this line this is straight line then it will complete the execution and releases all the logs at the same moment that's why this t and transaction and this is straight line because this is with respect to time and all the logs are released at the same moment at the same instant so this is a straight line again 
and this particular line see so see the arrow see you will see this is a straight line where the executions or operations are taking place so this figure is i hope clear to you any doubt um, you can ask me okay uh, by phone or by mail okay whatever the your means comfortable um, but okay so the pre-claiming log protocol is clear now coming to the next one and this one is very important believe me that is two-phase locking or 2PL well this locking protocol divides the execution phase of a transaction into three parts first part transaction starts when the transaction starts executing or execution it seeks permission for all the lock it requires so first part is that it seeks permission for all the lock it requires second part is where the transaction acquires all the locks and as soon as the transaction releases its first lock the third phase starts and in this phase the transaction cannot demand any new locks so it only releases the acquired lock so i'm repeating again see first part when the transaction going to start its execution, it seeks permission for all the locks it requires. Second part, transaction acquires all the locks. Third part will begin as soon as the transaction releases the first lock. Okay, I'm not saying that all the locks are released at the same time. I'm saying that when it releases first lock, the transaction's third stage part of this 2PL will begin. Well, at this phase, transaction cannot demand any new locks. It can only release the acquired lock. So there are three parts in two-phase locking. So don't be confused. Okay. Now, well, look at the diagram. You see T begin. As all the locks, locks are not acquired at the same time, it is gradually acquiring all, the, all of them. So this curve is not straight now. You see, lock acquisition phase, this is somewhat banned and when all the locks are acquired it's start execution then releasing phase as i have already told you that releasing phase is also what not occurred at the same moment it is releasing the locks gradually one by one so that's why this curve looks like this this is not a straight line so three phase first lock acquisition phase execution phase and the third releasing phase but basically lock acquisition phase and releasing phase these are the two important phases i hope this diagram is clear to you again i am saying any doubt ask me okay next two phase locking has two phases one is known as growing as i have said that these two phases are important and growing mean where all the locks are being acquired by the transaction and that is known as our growing phase and the next phase is shrinking and what is shrinking? When all the logs held by the transaction are being released. To claim exclusive or like write log, a transaction must first acquire a shared read log and then upgrade it to an executive or exclusive log. So you have to note down that you cannot claim an exclusive log or write log directly. First, you have to, means the transaction has to acquire a shared log then only it can upgrade it to an exclusive log clear so two phases are there in the two uh, two phase locking system first growing phase when all the locks are being acquired and shrinking phase when all the locks are being released but basically it is it consists of three parts first part you have seen that it seeks for permissions of those locks to be acquired second part when it acquires all the locks and third part it releases the logs gradually okay it cannot demand any new lock at that time so that is two phase locking i hope all these topics are clear to you okay i'll in the next class i'll discuss more on this locking protocol so today i have discussed three lock protocols first simplistic lock protocol second pre-claiming lock protocol and the third one is two phasing lock protocol okay two phase locking so question for this lecture is that how many number of parts this two phase locking protocol execution phase can be divided and what are they? Okay, so command the answer. Take care. Bye bye.